Good day everyone. Our topic is all about 1986 People Power Revolution. The objectives are review the events of the martial law, discuss the assassination of Senator Aquino, discuss the reports regarding the assassination of Senator Aquino, analyze the snap election results, highlight the events of the EDSA People Power Revolution, and explain the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Martial law was terminated by President Ferdinand E. Marcos on January 17, 1981 through Proclamation No. 2045. According to Amnesty International, around 70,000 people were detained for being enemies of the state and 34,000 tortured in various military facilities. After martial law in 1981, the national debt grew to 395.51 billion pesos primarily because the government relied on foreign loans. The assassination of Senator Benigno Ninoy S. Aquino Jr. marked the end of the Marcos administration. The assassination of Senator Benigno S. Aquino Jr. on August 21, 1983 at the Manila International Airport or also known as Karunkay na Iya or Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Binigno Ninoy S. Aquino Jr. was one of the staunch critics of President Marcos. He was sentenced to death by firing squad in 1977 because of his alleged ties with the NPA and communist. In 1983, Senator Aquino was shot dead on the tarmac of Manila International Airport. Report of the Fact-Finding Board created under PD-1886, The Majority Opinion, on Quezon City, October 22, 1984. In 1984, the Agriva Board submitted two separate reports on the assassination of Philippine President Benigno Aquino. Both reports concluded that the assassination was a military conspiracy, rejecting the military's vision which involved Galman as a communist NPA perpetrator. The excerpt from Galman et al. versus Sandigan Bayan et al. GR number 72670 on September 12, 1986. The Aquino Galman double murder case was assigned to the 1st Division of the Santigan Bayan or the Graft Court of the Philippines. On December 2, 1985, two years after the assassination of Senator Aquino, the side court acquitted all of the 26 accused individuals and effectively confirmed the culpability of Rolando Galman. Doctrine of Tupardy a legal clause that bars a second prosecution either after an acquittal or a conviction. This ensures that no person gets a multiple punishments for the same offense. So the doctrine of jeopardy is if a person commits a crime or offense and the case is terminated either by acquittal or conviction, conviction or in any other manner without the consent consent of the accused, the latter cannot again be charged with the same or identical offense. And the Agrava Board, also known as Agrava Fact-Finding Board, to investigate the assassination of opposition Senator Benigno Aquino Jr. So, the Agra Board, Agrava Board, it was a servant of the nation specifically mandated to provide the government the information needed to bring justice to all those who conspired and participated in the Aquino ass assassination. And the dramatis personae is a term that refers to the individual involved in a drama or a stage act. People versus Luther Custodia et al. The prayer in the petition uh, for a declaration of a mistrial in Sandy Combined Cases, numbers 110 and 111. So, uh, the commission submitted a recommendation where the proceedings of the said case, which is the Aquino Galman case, have been vitiated by lack of due process and hereby respectfully recommends that People versus Luther Custodia et al. be granted. And the Olympus is the code name of the president that time inside the uh, Malacanang Palace. That then the president had stage managed in and from Malacanang Palace a scripted and predetermined manner of handling and disposing of the Aquino Galman murder case. 
and that the prosecution in the Aquino Kalman case and the justices who tried and decided the same acted under the compulsion of same pressure which proved to be beyond their capacities to resist, which uh, not only prevented the prosecution prosecution but also predetermined the final outcome of the case so uh and the a dangerous life is the 1988 film focuses on the latter years of the marcos administration including the 1983 aquino assassination and the 1986 edsa people power revolution so it is a film that shows what happened during uh, the time during the marcos and the edsa people People Power Revolution and the Aquino Assassination. A Path to Democratic Renewal, a report on the February 7, 1986 presidential election in the Philippines. Uh, the Kilusang Bagong Lipunan, or the KBL, is a political formation composed of individuals and parties that supported President Marcos' vision of a new society for the Philippines. Um, it was the only, uh, the KBL was the only political party recognized by the government that time. So, uh, this eventually prompted the president to call for a snap election or a move which was aimed to uh, disprove public perceptions that he had lost the Filipino people's mandate. So on election day, February 7, 1986, incumbent President Ferdinand Marcos of Kilusang Bagong Lipunan or KBL faced Corazon Si Aquino of Partido Democratico, Filipino Lakas ng Bayan or PDP Laban, and the former proclaimed Marcos as the victor while the latter declared Aquino the winner. So during that uh, election or snap election, um, uh, Corazon P. Aquino declared as the winner and the president of the Philippines. So the electoral process by government sponsored an administrative incompetence at every level, including but not limited to. So before we proceed to that, um, uh, let me define what is the electoral process. It is a set of rules that determine how elections and referendums are conducted and how the results are determined. So the following are uh, the electoral electoral process by government so first is irregularities in the handling of voter registration by ineptitude and design harassments and violence against campaign workers intimidation of voters and poll workers prior to and during election uh, deliberate manipulation of tally results falsification of provincial municipal certificates of canvas manipulation of government funds for partisan purpose and general disregard for the provisions of the Philippine Omnibus Electoral Code or Batas 131 uh, to 881. Next is the Commissions on Elections or the COMELEC, a constitutional commission that is tasked to supervise and implement laws regarding the conduct of elections. So the Commission on Elections is the principal government agency tasked by the Constitution to enforce and administer all laws and regulations concerning the conduct of regular and special elections. So uh, it is a body that is designed to be constitutionally independent from the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government to ensure the conduct of free, fair, and honest elections. Next is the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections or NAMFREL. It is an independent organization that advocates a clean and nonpartisan monitoring and elections. And NAMFREL became crucial in the tabulation of votes casted during the 1986 presidential election. CPCP statement for Archbishop Ricardo J. Cardinal Vidal on February 13, 1986. So, um, one of the most important sectors that opposed the Marcos administrations were the religious groups. In fact, different formations of the church composed of the uh, laity seminarians, priests, and nuns were already vocal critics of the government even before the assassination of Senator Aquino in 19. 
1983. So by the time of 1986 snap selection, the likes of Archbishop Jaime Cardinal Sin of the Archdiocese of Manila and Archbishop Ricardo J. Cardinal Vidal of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines or CBCP were considered as opposition leaders who represented the Catholic faiths. So uh, the, uh, it follows that the post-election statement released by the CBCP on CBCP on February 13, 1986, it was written by Cardinal Vidal, who at the time was the head of the Archdiocese of Cebu and the CPCP president. Uh, what is interesting is to consider that the essence of the statement reflects how the church used its influence to respond to the government, which undermined the election of 1986. Uh, so, the post-election statement of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines was, uh, the people have spoken or have tried to. Despite the obstacles thrown in the way of their speaking freely, we, the bishops, believe that on the basis of our assessment, as pastors of the recently concluded polls, what they attempted to say is clear enough. So, the conduct of polls in our considered judgment the polls were unparall unparalleled in the fraudulence of their conduct, and we condemn especially the following modes of fraudulence and irregularities. Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or the CVCP, is the permanent organizational assembly of the bishops of the Philippines exercising together with certain pastoral offices for the Christian faithful of their territory through apostolic plans, programs, and projects uh, suited to the circumstances of time and place in accordance with law for the promotion of, uh, of the greater good offered by the church to all people. And for the next uh, slide, this shows the SNAP election results as of 10 p.m. February 9, 1986. So it, uh, the slide shows the tally between uh, Aquino and Marcos and the tally for vice president which is Tolentino, Laurel, and Calau. 1986 People Power Revolution Also known as the Adza Revolution from February 22 to 25, 1986. This has led to the sustained campaign of civil resistance against the region of violence and electoral fraud of Ferdinand Marcos. Basically, this revolution is to end the dictatorship of President Marcos and to begin the new era marked by the true freedom and democracy. February 22, 1986, at 6 p.m., a press conference was held by Defense Minister Juan Ponce and Rile and AFP the Deputy Chief of Staff, Fetal V. Ramos, to announce their resignation from the Marcos administration. During the conference, Enrile said that he could no longer support a president who thwarted the will of the people in the elections. Thus, Ramos called for the support of the police and military because we can no longer appeal to the president. Both are implementers of martial law whereas the Latins serve as chief of the Philippine Constabulary under Marcos' administration. However, after the snap election, both withdrew their support for President Marcos. Later on at 11 p.m., radio address of Archbishop Jaime Cardinal Sin calling on fellow Filipinos to support and relay and Ramos through a Catholic I mean, a radio veritas. Um, it is a Catholic-owned station, which is actually against the administration. Thus, this is the beginning of a peaceful revolution at EDSA. Selected photographs of the EDSA People Power Revolution from February 22 to 25, 1986. Um, the following sources are photographs taken during the peaceful revolution and witness the swelling of demonstrators at the EDSA stage by Filipinos from different walks in life, various prayers vigil conducted before the marine tanks, and further defections by military men. February 25, 1986 At 10 a.m., 
Corazon Aquino installed as the 11th president of the Philippines at Club Filipino in Central City. She and Salvador H. Laurel as vice president took their oaths before senior Supreme Court justice, respectively. Our later, President Marcos had his own inauguration ceremony at Malacanang in Manila. He was sworn into office by Chief Justice Ramon T. Aquino. Later on the evening, Marcoses had fled the country after taking advice from Washington, D.C., and then people immediately rushed to Manjola to take part on the historic dismantling of the Marcos region. So, um, overall, in that day, it is the downfall of the dictatorship, which the nation had to endure for more than a decade. Popular Songs of the Edsa People Power Revolution The 1986 Edsa People Power Revolution composed of Filipinos from various sectors of the society. It was a political movement sustained not only on the unwavering patriotism of its participants, but also by the song that serenaded the protesters on the streets. The following selected piece is one of the songs that were popularized at the time at of the Edsa People Power Revolution. The song titled Bayan Ko was a condiment written by Jose Carson de Jesus. We have here some notes. First is Camp Aguinaldo. So Camp Aguinaldo is a military base located in Quezon City along Edza. It is named after Emilio Aguinaldo, who is a well-known military commander of the revolutionary forces against Spain. And then we have the Reform the Armed Forces or RAM. Um, it is a group of officers who wanted to change the image of military that was polit politicized and rife with corruption at the time. Um, this is, I mean, this became um, instrumental in the 1986 Edsa Revolution. And then tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. Um, this is a popular song written by Tony Orlando. Um, this is used as a song for Senator Benigno Aquino homecoming in 1983. However, after his um, assassination, um, people protest by singing this song, making the color yellow a symbol of the Adza People Power Revolution. Color yellow, yes. And then Magkaisa, um, this is a song by Tito Sito. 
Homer Flores and Erne Dilipana, a tribute to the events that had transported to the events that had transported at EDSA. 1987 Philippines Constitution On March 25, 1986, President Aquino declared a constitutional government and issued Proclamation No. 3, which mandated for the creation of the provisional charter called the Freedom Constitution. It regulates the power of the chief executive in relation to a martial law proclamation. Good morning, everyone. My name is Raymond A. Villanueva, the last reporter. My topic is about Article 6, the Legislative Department, Section 27, thereof passed by the Congress or local legislative body after the registration of a petition, therefore signed by at least 10% of the total number of registered voters. Section 31. No law granting a title of royalty or nobility shall be enacted. Pass the bill. It shall be sent together with the objections to the other house. Section 32. The Congress shall, as early as possible, provide for a system of initiative and referendum and the exceptions therefrom. Article 7. Executive Department. Section 1. The executive power shall be vested in the President of the Philippines. Section 3. There shall be a vice president who shall have the same qualification is an term of office and be elected with and in the same manner as the president. Section 4. The president and the vice president shall be elected by direct vote of the people for a term of six years shall be begun at noon on the third day of June next following the day of the election shall end and at noon of the same date six years thereafter section seven the president elected at the vice president shall assume office at the beginning of their terms if the president elect falls to quality the vice president elect shall act as president until the president not have been chosen the vice president elect shall act as a president until the president shall have been chosen qualified section 16 the President shall nominate and, with the consent of the Commission on the Appointments, appoint the heads of the Executive Departments, Ambassadors, other Public Ministers, and Consuls. Section 17. The President shall have control of all Executive Departments, bureaus, and officers. He shall ensure that the laws be faithfully executive. Section 18. The President shall be the Commander-in-Chief of all the Armed Forces of the Philippines and whenever it becomes necessary, he may call out such Armed Forces to prevent or suppress lawless violence. Next, Article, Article 8, Judicial Department Section 1 the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such lower courts as may be established by law. Judicial power includes the duty of the courts of justice to settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable. Section 2. The Congress shall have the power to define, prescribe, and apportion the jurisdiction of various courts but may not de deprive the Supreme Court of its jurisdiction over ca cases enumerated in Section 5. Hereof, Section 3, the judicial shall enjoy fiscal autonomy. Appropriations for the judicial may not be reduced by the legislature below the amount appropriated for the previous year. Section 4, four The Supreme Court shall be composed of a Chief Justice and 14 Associate Justices. It may sit in bank or at its discretion. Last, 
Article 9. Accountability of Public Officers Section 1. Public office is a public trust. Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people. Serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency, and act with the patriotism and justice, and lead modest lives. lives. Section 4. The present anti-graph court, known as the Sandigayang, Sandigan Bayan, shall continue to function and exercise its jurisdiction as now or hereafter may be provided by law. Section 5. There is hereby created the independent uh, office of the ombudsman composed of the ombudsman to be known as Tanod Bayan, one overall deputy and at least one deputy each for Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Section 8. The Ombudsman and his deputies shall be natural-born citizens of the Philippines. Section 9. The Ombudsman and his deputies shall be appointed by the President from at least six years nominees prepared by the Judicial and Bar Council. Section 11. The Ombudsman and his deputy shall serve for a term of seven years without reappointment. Section 12. The Ombudsman and his deputies as, as protectors of the people shall act promptly on complaints filled in any form or manner against public officials or employees of the government. Thank you.